Okay, Oak Rovers, this is going to be a video to help you with the classwork on section 8.2.1. And 8.2.1 starts off with a letter. What I want you to do is I want you to read that letter, uh, problem number 43, and then I want you to read all the things that are, which they ask you to do for your task. And then after you do that, you're on page 341, what I want you to do is look at the list of parabolas. I just want you to uh, look at two different parabolas from that list. And the two parabolas I want you to look at are the y equals x squared minus 6x plus 5 and the y equals negative x squared plus 3x plus 4. And what I want you to do with those is I want you to make a table, I want you to make a graph completely from that table, and then I also want you to factor using a generic rectangle and diamond problem. Now when you make a table, I want you to look at the second one. So if I'm looking, making a table, uh, your table, I want your x values to go from negative 5 all the way to positive 5. And if you graph this correctly, you should have a parabola for both of these. And a parabola is kind of a U or a V-shaped type of, type of a graph, and it can either open up or down. Uh, we're going to talk about if it opens up or down when I get back from Wolf Ridge, but I'm actually going to be at Wolf Ridge for the rest of the week, so uh, you're going to have to do this on your own. Now when you make your table for this problem, I want you to take special care in the equation y equals negative x squared plus 3x plus 4. And the reason being, when you put a negative number in for x, let's say like a negative 3, I want you to remember that you're supposed to square the negative 3 first and then multiply it by a negative, negative 1 or by a negative sign. Let me just show you what I mean by that. If I put negative 3 in for x, I'll take negative 3 squared, and negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. But then if I multiply it by a negative, like I do in this problem here, I end up getting negative 9. So let's go through order of operations step by step if x is equal to negative 3 for this particular table. If I put negative 3 in for x, I get negative 3 squared, and then I take the opposite of that, so I get negative 9. And then I take 3 times negative 3, which is also negative 9. And then I have positive 4. Now if I combine those like or if I combine those terms, negative 9 and negative 9 and 4 is negative 18 and 4, which is negative 14. So the answer for uh, if x is if x is negative 3 will be 9 is negative 14. And I want you to do that for each of these values when you make your table. You're going to have to plug in the values of negative 5 for x all the way to positive 5 for x. And then I want you to make a nice graph on the graph paper that I have for you. And then I want you to ask, answer these questions. Does your uh, parabola have symmetry? And there is a box that talks about symmetry on page 342 if you're unfamiliar what symmetry means. Okay? And then also, what is the vertex of your parabola? Well, it kind of should make a U or a V, an upside down U or, an up, or, ups, or not upside down U or V, and the vertex is the lowest point, or if it opens downward, it's going to be the highest point. So I want you to kind of answer those questions. And that's what your assignment is going to be for 8.2.1. I'm also going to be asking you to complete numbers 45 through 50 before I get back from uh, Wolfridge. So you're going to do basically this problem that I just talked about, making the graph, making a table, and then factoring using a generic rectangle and diamond problem, and then answer these questions about it down here. And then after you do that, you'll do the homework, which is 45 through 50. When I get back, we're going to do the first day that we get back from uh, that long weekend, we're going to do 8.2.2 uh, in class. So there won't be any homework over the weekend as long as you get to number 50 of your book in Chapter 8.